You're listening to Happy Healthy Hormones with Dr. Chris. Are you tired of the short-term patch to your health problems? Is avoiding medications and surgeries important to you? If you answered yes, then your prayers have been answered. Dr. Chris has been helping people transform their health for over a decade. He's a world-renowned health expert who specializes in holistic health. He's a professional speaker, chiropractor, and international best-selling author. It's his mission to help you reach your full God-given potential through holistic health and healing. Get ready to be inspired and transformed. Here's your host, Dr. Chris. Hello and welcome to the show where disease takes a dive and people come to thrive. Today we have a special guest that I want to share with you. This is a personal friend, colleague, Dr. Michael Ruscio. He is a best-selling author of Healthy Gut, Healthy You. He is a clinical researcher, functional medicine doctor, really helps change people's lives, really knows a lot when it comes to thyroid and the gut and just a, a plethora of other knowledge and information. But this is, a, this is an expert in his field. And so he's an awesome guy. You guys can get more information from him after the show. I'll give you some links to him. But let's go ahead and get into it because he's dropping some truth bombs and some really great knowledge and action steps you can do today to help heal your gut, your thyroid, just getting yourself better. So without uh, taking any more time, here's Dr. Ruscio. All right, everyone, and welcome to another episode. Today, we have got Dr. Michael Ruscio. So this man is the man. Um, I know him personally. We used to roll in the trenches together when we were learning how to change lives. Uh, but hey, Dr. Mike, good to have you. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Well, hey, just have the viewers understand you a little bit better and kind of what your story is because kind of your transformation from maybe coming out of your background and, and what led you to having – uh, journey in holistic health and functional medicine and what brought you to where you are today? Sure. I'll try to give the kind of reader's digest version of this. But when I was in undergrad, I was studying exercise kinesiology and I was pre-med and I was pretty dead set on going into conventional medicine. That just seemed to be the path that I was I was really aiming for. And when I was about 20, about 20 actually, I started feeling tired, irritable, had brain fog, had very troubling insomnia all of a sudden. And given at the time I was a college athlete, I was playing lacrosse. I felt, you know, 20 years old, you feel almost invincible. And then all of a sudden I just felt crushed. And I saw an internist, a general practitioner and endocrinologist. They all did some lab work and and workups. Everything came back negative. And they all said, well, you know, you're young, you've got a good body composition, your cholesterol, blood sugar, all that checks out. So it's probably just stress or, you know, you get one of those kind of standard platitudes. And this led me to look further into some realms of, of holistic nutrition I was, I was studying kind of independently. And I found through there functional medicine and a doctor who, who practices functional medicine with a focus on digestive health as I do now. And Long story short, he found out that I had an intestinal parasite, and that was really the one thing that got rid of my brain fog, fatigue, insomnia. And what was really interesting there was a few things. I did not have any digestive symptoms. So you would think if you have an intestinal parasite, you'd have diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain, none of that, only these neurological symptoms, fatigue, depression, brain fog, insomnia, And what else was interesting was I had gone on the internet, looked at my symptoms. I thought I had adrenal fatigue. I thought I had a thyroid problem. I thought I had heavy metal toxicity. And I tried protocols for all those things and and nothing really got me feeling better until I addressed the root cause of my issue, which was the gut. And so I I diverted my training to go into alternative medicine. And there's a little bit of a story that I'll just give the the real short of it. Uh, When I got into alternative medicine, I loved much of what I saw, but I also was a little bit tenuous that there appeared to be a high amount of, I guess, hyperbole where there was extreme claims being made. and, And I felt that there was this good aspect of alternative medicine that was progressive, but some of it was a bit too progressive and needed to be throttled back through a window of scientific research and examination. And so that's what's led me now to be both in the clinic, but also performing clinical research as we do at our clinic and, and having a couple of papers either published or in the process of being submitted for publication as we speak. That's awesome. And yeah, I mean, I remember in school, you always were listening to some kind of audio research, like 
you're, you're the research guy. And that's what I, I love about you is you get in there, you do the dirty work, you do the work that other people don't really want to do. Right. Um, and so that is what's led towards you having such a great expertise in the system. And I think that's why, I mean, you're able to help really so many people. So, you know, when you look at the different body systems and, and how it affects people and you talked about how you thought, okay, was it toxicity? Was it this, was it this other issue over here in this body system? And it came back to the digestive system, you know, for you and your research and, and your clinical experience, what areas, um, when it comes to the, the body systems, are you seeing being affected the most from just the lifestyle that so many um, Americans, now we have people listening all over the country, but I mean, the epidemic is really in America. So like, what are you seeing with body systems? Which one would you say is the biggest culprit? Right. That, that kind of is the question, right? Because it answers an important um, quantity for people, which is where, where do I start? And I probably do have a biased perspective here because much of my research and clinical offering is in gut health, but that's for the reason that it just seemed over the years that that was the one area where the problems were the most prevalent and the treatments offered the most consistent and most noteworthy improvements in people's symptoms. And there, there's a couple of pieces there that are, that are really important to kind of pepper into to the, to the nuance, which is one, you can have digestive tract inflammation that is only manifesting outside of the gut. So you could have inflammation in your intestines that's only manifesting as joint pain, fatigue, and depression. That's one key distinction that people should really make. You don't have to have abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, bloating to have a problem in the gut. You can have a silent gut problem that's only manifesting outside of the gut. Let me combine that secondly with the understanding that the environment that we live in now is not conducive to formation of a healthy gut uh, and a healthy gut microbiota and the immune system that kind of houses that microbiota or the microbiota being the world of bacteria in your gut. If this forms early in life and with use of, with, with overuse of antibiotics, with our, our hygienic society, which has benefits, but also has drawbacks of partially crippling the formation of our immune system with the increased yeah. use of cesarean birth with lack of breastfeeding and more formula feeding and, and lack of exposure to dirt and animals and, and things like this that you might see more so in a hunter gatherer population. This sets the stage for guts that don't form well. And this can be one of the main things that plagues people later in life and why someone has persistent brain fog or joint pain or what they think is a thyroid problem, but might actually be due to silent gut inflammation. So I would say, while it's not a panacea, the place I would start after getting a few dietary and lifestyle basics situated would be looking into one's gut health. Well, I think that's huge because as you know, that gut brain connection is right there. And so when you incorporate the, the gut, which is directly correlated with the brain and the nervous system and how that controls everything. It's like, no wonder people are having so many issues or there are things outside of the digestive system that you would think, Oh, Hey, I'm not having diarrhea. It's not a gut problem. And obviously you're an example right there that, yeah, it, uh, that's where a lot of things stem from. And you look at our lifestyle and how that's affected and how that really targets the gut. So many people are just dealing with things. It's yeah, it makes perfect sense. So when you look at that, uh, what are some of the areas or lifestyle, maybe environment factors that you see that are having the biggest negative effects on people's digestive systems? Well, I mean, certainly there's some simple low hanging fruit that probably won't be new to people, which is things like added sugar, processed foods. Uh, you know, the, the processed foods are, are laden with, with different preservatives and, and uh, things that can irritate the gut. So certainly getting yourself on a, on a whole foods, fresh diet, uh, fresh food diet is a great place to start. There's debate as to should you be paleo, should you be Mediterranean, should you be vegetarian, should you be low carb? I think we can find data to support those diets working for almost anyone. So I would encourage someone to start with the basics and then do some experimentation to see where they may feel best in, in terms of, you know, do they, do they eat lower carb, higher fat, or do they go to the opposite end of the spectrum and eat higher carb, lower fat, as long as the food quality is high. And actually we, we recently interviewed Christopher Gardner, who's a researcher at Stanford and, and he pitted against one another a healthily constructed low carb diet versus a healthy constructed low fat diet. And they found equivalent results for weight loss, body composition, 
and uh, blood lipid profile. So as long as the diet's based on fresh whole foods, nothing processed, uh, probably one of the biggest culprits would be added sugar and processed grains because it's just so easy to consume such high volumes of those foods because they're so hyper palatable. As long as you're starting with that foundation, that's a great place to start. And if you combine that with making sure you're getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep per night and you're getting some time in nature and exercise and you have some enjoyment in your life, that's a, a very good start toward getting yourself a, a solid foundation set. Well, that's great. And so when you talk about those things and, and how they're affecting other aspects, you also talk about the thyroid a lot. And I was looking through your website and, and reading it through your book and there's that connection between the thyroid. So how does, how does what you're talking about there relate to stemming into the thyroid and, and affecting that area too? Yes, this is a fascinating area. And, and I think the healthcare consumer today really has to be careful because Again, as great as alternative medicine is, as someone who's in that field, it does seem that hypothyroidism is starting to be overdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I've been calling attention to on my platform and my website for a while now. And there was just a study published in Greece that looked at 99 patients. And these patients all had kind of an ambiguous hypothyroid diagnosis. This group of clinician researchers went back and double checked, and they essentially found that 60, 60% of these people were actually not hypothyroid and did not need thyroid medication. But what I think happens is people have symptoms and they search their symptoms on the internet. And because hypothyroidism can present as such a wide array of symptoms, people, people oftentimes think that they have hypothyroidism. They lean on their doctors uh, and there's a more progressive movement to give more people thyroid hormone. But coming back to my earlier posit, in many of those cases, in my experience, the thyroid-like symptoms are actually coming from a problem in the gut. And so that's one thing to be cautious of is the symptoms that you think are being driven by your thyroid may actually be driven by your gut. That being said, not out of the way, there is evidence showing that your digestive health both puts you at risk for developing hypothyroidism. One study in, in over 1,800 patients found that the highest predictor if someone was going to have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, this, this essentially mm. gut infection using the term loosely, the number one risk factor was being hypothyroid or being on thyroid medication as compared to people who had had previous intestinal surgery, who were on immunosuppressive drugs. So I mean, the, the impact or the, the connection between hypothyroidism and in this case, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is, is pretty interesting. And there's other research showing that having either helicobacter pylori, H. pylori, which is a stomach bacteria, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth increases the incidence of thyroid autoimmunity or, or Hashimoto's, which is the primary cause of hypothyroidism. And That's then, interesting. Yeah, and then there's one more layer here. Sorry to be a little bit long-winded, but there's a lot no, to good. this picture. Um, there are some patients who are on thyroid medication who – and some of this is my, my inference and some of this has been published, but essentially who have non-healthy absorption because their intestines aren't healthy. And remember, the thyroid hormone medication, levothyroxine, synthroid, WP thyroid, whatever it is, is absorbed in the small intestine. So it's not a stretch to assume that if someone has small intestinal inflammation, perhaps from SIBO, that they may not be adequately absorbing their thyroid hormone. And this is why and how we've been able to publish a number of case studies where a patient has been able to decrease their thyroid hormone dose while losing weight, while feeling better, because they were improving the health of their intestines, thus better absorbing the medication. So they needed less medication. And because they were improving the health of their intestines, they saw a number of symptoms also improve. So there's this kind of Gordian knot of causality regarding thyroid and gut, but there's definitely many points of connectivity there. That's amazing. So, I mean, it, it, in general, it's like, okay, you might have a thyroid problem now, but it really stemmed probably from the GI issues. It's been there for so long that finally it's worn down this thyroid. But how do people even understand, like, what did they, what's the best test they should do? Should they get testing? Do they 
I mean, what's, how do they figure out what if a thyroid or a GI problem or is it both or what should right. they do? That's a great question. And, and the, the answer is not complicated, but um, you know, what I would, it's a, it's a bit hard to answer in this context, but what I would offer okay. people is if they've been screened by a doctor and they do not have hypothyroidism, but they're suspicious, I would then look to optimize their gut health. If they've been diagnosed and they're on medication, but their symptoms aren't where they'd like them to be. And now they're considering, well, maybe I need to go on a different form of thyroid hormone. Oftentimes people who are on levothyroxine or Synthroid are told they need to be on Armour Thyroid or Nature Thyroid because they need the T4 hormone plus the T3 hormone. Um, I wouldn't start there. And actually it's not what the totality of the literature suggests. What I would suggest that you do is one, keep your medication the same, but move to optimize your gut health. Also ask your doctor to run a ferritin. It, it is possible. There's some evidence now that low ferritin, ferritins specifically below 100, which is a, essentially a marker of iron status. Mm -hmm. When that is low, that may be causing the non-response to the levothyroxine or the synthroid. So the, the typical dictum in alternative medicine is go on Synthroid, go on Armour, or add Cytomel to your levothyroxine. You need the T3 along with the T4. I would actually make that an end phase recommendation where you start with just keeping your thyroid hormone dose the same, try to optimize your gut health, also check your ferritin. And if ferritin is low, you can take an iron supplement that gets you to 100 or above. Uh, and then if someone has thyroid autoimmunity, kind of the other piece of this, which is assessed via a blood test known as your TPO antibodies, then there's a number of things one can do. Certainly improving your diet can be helpful. A gluten-free diet for some may be helpful. Vitamin D, magnesium, and selenium all have shown benefit in addition to CoQ10. So they could take a, a, a cocktail of, of those different supplements to try to improve the thyroid autoimmunity. Um, so there, there's more to that, and I should backpedal for one second here and say when I when I say take steps to optimize your gut health, I think that my book Healthy Gut Health You lays out a very friendly protocol to help one optimize their gut health that does not require testing. And one of the things I would recommend people don't do is rush out and do a bunch of gut tests because if you're an experienced clinician, you end up going through this kind of treatment algorithm with people almost irrespective of what the test results show. And that's what I learned after years in practice. And that's what I've kind of codified into the self-help protocol in the book. So you can go through the whole protocol for probably the cost of one test. So I think that's an excellent place for people to start is the, the book protocol toward the end point of optimizing their gut health. That's awesome. So it's like start of the basics, get a good foundation to your gut health, and then start to work from there. Exactly. Yeah. And the book protocol, it, it walks people up through some fairly advanced therapies, but it's kind of a choose your own adventure guide, meaning we start you off with step one and then we reevaluate. And many people won't need to go beyond step one, but some people will need to go to step two or three or four, just depending on the severity of the imbalance they have present. That's awesome. And so when you're looking at all these things, you're looking at the thyroid, you're looking at the gut health, you're looking at these different factors too. Really, how does the nervous system really play into all this as well? Yeah, you know, there's, there's debate on is it gut brain or, or brain gut? And I think it, it's probably both. For some people, the, the brain may be the primary area that requires attention. For other people, it may be more the gut that needs attention. But there's a few clues that one can look to. Um, if, if you've had prior emotional or emotional, psychological, or head trauma, then it's probably a good idea to start with the head. If you feel like you're always stuck on, uh, Ashik Gupta, who uh, is the, the creator of the Gupta program, which is an excellent program for kind of neuro retraining, he calls it a conditioned defense response, where you can think of it like if, if you're always incredibly angst and, and, and wound up. Some people end up falling into this pattern of always being on, right? They're, they're never relaxing. Even when they have a moment of potential solitude, they're on their phone, they're checking the news, they're checking social media, and they go from task to task to task to task, and they, they never have any downtime. And that can eventually lead to this 
kind of over ramp syndrome where your nervous system is chronically in this highly sympathetic state that can eventually weaken your immune system. And this, you know, both of these scenarios are where I think things like chiropractic care, meditation, uh, or, or some kind of neural retraining program like the Gupta program are very helpful in terms of getting the brain and the nervous system right. Now, conversely, if, if you have a lot of digestive symptoms, then, and especially if you're bloating and abdominal pain started before your depression, let's say, or, or lethargy, then it may, it may be more of a gut brain. And in an ideal world, we always would be supporting every potential system, but people have limited time and resources. So if we can help them identify the one system that might be the, the primary domino that fell, then we can make their lives a little bit easier. So those are a few thoughts in terms of sussing out where to start gut or brain. No, that's awesome. Get the biggest bang for your bucks. And then you just got to be resourceful. And that's right. key. What was, what was your motivation in writing your Healthy Gut, Healthy You book? Well, uh, I guess it was twofold. One, you know, there, there's, there's a short wait to be seen at the clinic, and I felt bad for patients who would have to wait six to eight months to be seen, not, not having anything to, to hand them. And, and so I wanted to write something that would really, in part, kind of make me obsolete and, and give people the, the same experience in working with me via going through a book and just kind of writing out the whole process of listening to someone, listening to their symptoms, offering them some treatments, modifying the treatment based upon their response, and also couching that in a reasonable dialogue that doesn't make someone afraid of food or scared of supplements. And at the same time, I was also seeing a lot of heretical thinking regarding gut health and these, these crazy claims being made, like you know, this, this special fiber bar that can help you lose 15 pounds. And when you actually look at the research in humans, that fiber is only shown to, loo, to, loo, to uh, sorry, lead to about a 2.5 pound weight loss. So there, there's a lot of people trying to kind of hijack the fact that gut health is really in vogue right now for their own material gain. And I wanted to provide people with a reasonable narrative that would give them straight talk on Yes, optimizing your gut health can help with weight loss, but no, you know, there's not a miracle fiber that's going to cause you to lose 20 pounds. Uh, so th th those were my you know, two of my primary motivations. That's awesome. No, I mean, it's like sometimes we just need a plan and sometimes people will relate to a certain way someone lays it out. You know, like we know a lot of the things are what we should do. Like we know salad good, McDonald's bad, that there's certain things we should be doing and shouldn't be doing. And we've heard it made before in different ways, but just the way that you've laid this out in this book, it just, you know, it's a way that people can connect easier, have a game plan, like you said. And, um, you know, great. Hey, if they can heal it on their own, then, Hey, that's, that's the ideal. But Hey, if you're struggling and there's other things going on and Hey, that's why there's professionals like yourself to, to um, see them through that and, and really get the results they're looking for. That's key. Now, Dr. Mike, I like to ask everyone this question that I have on the podcast. Um, and so this is different for everybody, but what does reaching your fullest potential mean to you? Oh, great question. Yeah, I think reaching your, your fullest potential, I'll, I'll give a short term kind of answer to that, is, is just feeling like you have optimum energy, vibrance, and well being. And if you achieve that, then it doesn't matter what you're doing, if you're working or if you're at a coffee shop having a conversation with a friend or if you're doing something, playing with your kids, then you're going to be doing that fully engaged and, and bringing your, your most enriched self to the experience. So I, I would say that you know, someone who, who has a wealth of, of vibrance, vitality, and energy and well-being. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. And so, Dr. Mike, I know we're starting to run out of time here and uh... – I just want to give our, our viewers a chance to maybe reach out, get some resources from you, things you're doing. So like, what's a, some good ways that they can reach out and contact you, maybe get some of the resources you have out there for your patients as well? Sure. The, the, the website that's kind of the hub for everything else is drrusho.com, which is D-R-R-U-S-C-I-O.com. They can find my book on Amazon very easily. It's Healthy Gut, Healthy You. And we have a podcast and weekly videos. Um, and if, if they also go to um, drrusho.com slash gut quiz, they can take a short quiz that can help them 
with, uh, we, we recently put together a quick start guide. So like a quick, short version of the book to give people some simple tips and tricks to help them. So if they go to drrusho.com slash gut quiz, they can take that quiz and then the quiz will personalize a quick start guide for them, for them to help them kind of on ramp to improving their gut health as quickly and as easily as possible. Perfect. Yeah, I'll make sure I will put links to all those things on the, on the podcast. So you guys will be able to get that and click on those and go check that out for Dr. Mike. He's amazing. And, um, you know, Dr. Mike, I appreciate what you're doing and helping people and leading the industry and, and just that functional medicine and holistic health and helping people avoid the medications and surgeries, man, and living their full potential. So thank you for what you do. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please help more people in reaching their fullest potential and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to newedgewellness.com.